Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with Project Shinobi. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is something a little bit more interesting. I'm actually going to start to disassemble the, uh, the engine. I'm not going to completely strip it in this episode, but we're going to make a good start on it anyway. Um, before we begin, what I want to do is talk about a couple of little parts that I've uh, collected for the project. Um, I've got a new, uh, new one of these. This is um, part of the cooling system and if you recall um, previously we did mention this one here which is absolutely destroyed and as you can see this one is in much better condition uh, I, I, I actually imported this from the states because it was cheaper to buy it from the states than it was to um, buy one from a from a UK seller um, no idea why um, it's just how UK sellers price their parts uh, so yeah even even including the shipping it worked out cheaper I did give it a blast and a paint, uh, and as you can see, it's come up quite nice. Uh, next thing I got was some um, replacement foot pegs, because uh, the ones that were on the bike, there were the rubbers are all completely worn out, uh, and these look um, quite nice, as you can see. Uh, and I did mention in a previous uh, episode about um, a tail clip for the uh, for the light when we were when we were stripping it down. Um, I, I did mention it and. I managed to get one. Now this one is um, this one has been paid in a particular colour, but obviously I'll get it paid with the rest of the stuff. And this is what it does: it takes the tail light from looking like that and makes it look like that. And I think that looks a lot cleaner. Um, yeah, uh, I did actually have to pay um, quite a bit uh, for this part. It says it's a Kawasaki official licensed product. I'm not actually sure if that's a thing or not, to be perfectly honest. Um, but hey ho, it is what it is. Um, yeah, the, it was quite expensive. I'm not sure if it was more money than it would have cost to buy one back in the late 90s, early noughties or not. Um, but I think it cost me somewhere in the region of about 25 quid, which I thought for a piece of plastic was quite expensive. But hey ho, I've got one now. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to the actual engine. As you can see, I've got it here. Uh, there are it's, it's up on blocks. Um, there are uh, fluids still coming out of it. Every now and again, I get a little bit of coolant come out or a little bit of oil dripping out onto the bench, but um, oh, it is what it is. Eventually, we'll get to a point where there's none in it uh, because we'll have all the components stripped off. Anyway, let's make a start. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and do it in a semi-logical order uh, as, I, as I tear down this engine. And I think the best place to start is probably uh, with the oil filter and, and the cooler. And then we'll start at the top with the cam cover um, and all that good stuff, which will obviously involve removing all the pair valve system um, before we can get the cam cover off. So what I'll do, I'll start by taking off the, um, the oil filter and I'd imagine I'll probably undo this by hand because they shouldn't be that tight. There we go. All right, I'll get one of my little parts tubs because there's bound to be a bit of oil drip out of here. Like so. As I said before, when we drain the oil, it's absolutely lovely and clean. That, that engine oil looks absolutely lovely. So, yeah, it's... um. It has been looked after. It's not. Uh, it's not been completely um, left to rot. Right then, what we need to do next in order to get the cooler off is get a big socket onto this uh, onto this big this big bolt here and um, uh, and whip it out, and then the cooler will come off. Right then, thirty mil socket um, and the big ass ratchet, and we'll try and crack this off, it's going to be quite tight. Uh, there we go. And that is that off. And a little washer. And there we are. Right, now, the oil cooler will simply 
drop off like so empty all the oil out and there we are that is that now that can go into a tub just like so what I'll do in fact I'll use this tub um, once it stopped um, weeing oil out empty and <laughs> I'll empty that oil out into my uh, waste oil drum and then I'll stick a lid on it and we'll uh, put that to one side obviously that'll clean up nicely I'll give it a little bit of a polish before we uh, refit it later on in, in, in the later episode but that's that first part done right now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the top end start getting the, the pair system off the coils off um, all the associated hoses for the pair which come round to the uh, the vacuum ports on the back where the carbs plumb in um, get all of that off then we'll get the cam cover off and then uh, yeah we're uh, we're well on our way Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll start with the hoses on the back here. Um, just undo these clips and then they'll just pop off. And there we are, right, that's that one. And then um, we'll take the, uh, the pair um, stuff off all as a one I think. Um, these should just pop out, but I'll leave them like that. Um, these there's hoses everywhere on this there and another one another one there right they can all go into the box together um, things like the uh, the negatively, I mean that needs remaking really, um, and the uh, the positive one from the starter motor um, we'll sort out later. In fact, there's another one. I'll get that one off as well. That's from the cooling system. That one looks like it comes to yeah. Oh, I didn't want to come off there. Right. There we go. We've got, we've got vacuum hoses, coolant hoses, and all sorts of stuff down there. Right then, um, the engine is a little bit wobbly, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to straighten her up a little bit. There we go, that's better. Right. Now, there we go, there's the, uh, the coolant system. It's stopped dropping oil, so I'll, I'll empty that out later. And then uh, that can get labelled up and put to one side, ready for, ready for next time. Um, I'll take this hose off the back, the breather, that one that came from. This one goes up to the airbox. It's the breather pipe. And there we are. Naturally, I'll probably forget where half of them go, but I've got the luxury of obviously going back to the videos and. Uh, looking at it the uh, the factory manual does have really really good um a really good section all about routing of hoses cables and all that sort of stuff so that's uh well well worth a look right then what we'll do next i'll get the uh i'll get the tools i need to get the pair off and then we can start tearing into the cam cover okay so let's start cracking these off valves and reed valves underneath and there we are that's that all off in a one up these are the little reeds just in here we'll we'll leave them like that for the moment and what I can do here now is I can take off this little it's like a little shield I guess um, yeah, there we are. And as you can see, it hides a lot of a lot of rubbish behind. Pop that down to one side. Right, let's get these coils out. And 
these coils are perfectly fine. I believe they, they I mean the bike ran, so there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they, they'll go back in. And there we go. Right, what we'll do next is buzz out these these six um, these six bolts, and uh, yeah, we should be able to take the cam cover off. Then, in fact, what we'll start to do now is pop all this hardware into a tub, and then I'll mark that up. In fact, I'll mark it up now. Cam cover and pair. should now be able to take the cam cover off. She's not going to come off without a fight, so I need to go and grab a little mallet, just give it a little tap, and then we should be able to lift it off. There we are, right. There we go. Came off nicely there. There. And here we go, right, we've got the timing chain and the camshafts all under here. All these all these little gaskets feel all nice and plasticky and horrible, uh, as you would expect. Um, so I'll recover all of those. And there we go. And obviously the gasket for the cam cover itself. Okay, right, now what we need to do obviously is we need to remove the camshafts. Um, what I'll do, I'll uh, remove the uh, tensioner. We'll set it to TDC um, and then we'll remove the tensioner. Um, obviously things like the sensor, camshaft position sensor needs to be removed and all that good stuff. So I think what we'll do is um, I'll remove that sensor and then um, we'll uh, set it to TDC on cylinder one, and then we'll uh, we'll pull the tensioner out. Okay, right. What we'll do move that out of the way of this little cable clamp, and then we'll buzz these off. like it's been down the road at some point that one. It's quite tight. The gasket. Let's pop all those bolts and things in there, and that'll keep all of that together. Right, 17 mil socket. Okay. Right. In fact, probably, probably use a spanner. Actually, let's use a spanner. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to uh, align it to TDC. Cylinder one, which is obviously this one. Uh, at the moment, the timing mark is actually aligned perfectly. Um, 
this is the one we're looking at, the one with 4T on it and that mark there. And what we're looking at is the joint between the two cases just here. Um, but looking at the position of the camshafts, looks like it's actually, looks, yeah, it looks like it's actually TDC on the inlet stroke because the in mark and the X mark on the exhaust and inlet camshafts are 180 degrees out. So they need to be this way. So yeah, we're um, gonna turn the engine over. Until it relines again. And get it just right. And there we go. So there we go. The in and next marks are both aligned. And that is. TDC on there, uh, on cylinder one. If we look just here, you can see the cam lobes are pointing away from the uh, from the valve, from the valve lifters. As, uh, so the the valves are completely closed. Okay, what we can do now is uh, we can undo the we can undo the tensioner, which is not a thirteen. Let's try a twelve. Yeah, twelve. Okay. There we are. Undo the tensioner. Take the little spring and the little there's a little plunger in there as well. Pop that to one side, keep that all together. Right, and there we go. Now what we can do is completely remove the tensioner body. And that is the tensioner, so you can obviously reset it um, by just depressing the little plunger and it allows it to come out, just like so. Alright, I'll pop that into one of my boxes for later on and uh, yeah, I can now feel that the chain is nice and loose in there and um, you can hear it rattling around and you can see I can just, just about pull it off the camshaft. Right now, what we can do, we can um, undo the bolts on the t on the um, camshaft caps, um, and we can whip them camshafts out. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the bearing cap from the uh, camshafts. Now, um, the the camshafts are going to be under tension from the uh, from the valve springs under quite a lot of tension. Now, what we need to do is we need to remove all of these bolts in a specific order. Um, and that order is basically starting from the outside, working in a spiral pattern uh, from the outside inwards, um, removing the bolts a little bit at a time. Not if it, basically, if you carelessly loosen these bolts, you you do risk cracking this because the pressure from some of the springs can um, exert enough pressure to crack this. Now, what's worth pointing out is if this is cracked, then it's a new cylinder head job because these. Both this and the cylinder head are mated together when, when manufactured. So if this is damaged, we're, we're looking at a new cylinder head. And for one of these, it's going to be expensive because it's an old bike and getting older ones going to be um, going to be a bit of a mission, I think. So it's worth bearing in mind that these are mated to the cylinder head and they need to come out uncarelessly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply do them quarter turn at a time. <coughs> all the way around.
and then starting again just basically go all the way around again till such time as the roll completely loose and then can be removed you'll find that some of them will start to will, will feel like they've tightened up again as you go around obviously as the springs are exerting their pressure so what I'll do I'll get all of these bolts undone and I'll bring you back and I'll take the cap off right then um, we're at a stage now where all the bolts have got no tension on them and as you can see we can move the carrier uh, quite comfortably so I'm gonna whip them all out now reason that one's a different color to all the other which is a bit a bit strange I'm not sure if that's a ah, that's because it's longer it's actually a longer bolt so that one went in there and that one is a different color as well right okay so there's two two uh, two different colored ones which are actually longer than all the others which is uh, interesting I didn't actually notice that in the manual um, but obviously it will be important when it comes to putting it back together to make it go in the same place. Okay, here's the, uh, the top guide for the uh, for the chain. I can go in there as well. So yeah, these two here are actually longer bolts. And, uh, as you can see, they're not massively longer, but they are longer. So they'll have to go back into those two positions there. Okay, now what we can do is lift the cover off. Now there'll be some dowels under here which yeah so there's a dowel there just there look what I'll do the dowels is I'll drop them into the little box. You can see where the dowels go because the hole is ever you can see there's a little lip just inside the hole and um, that's where the dowels go so there'll be one there one there and I think that's it so there's, a, there's the other dowel there I'll pop that into that box as well. So yeah, there we uh, there we go. These there's a little bit of scoring in there, but um, nothing too dramatic. I think they'll be okay uh, as long as the shafts themselves are fine. Um, okay, right then. What we can do now is we can actually remove the shafts themselves. And there's the first one. And there is the second one. All right, I'll leave the chain there. What I've done is there's a uh, cable, um, a little cable clamp there. What I've done, I'll bend it out so it just holds the uh, holds the chain in place. Now. You can see that the inlet, uh, sorry, the exhaust uh, camshaft is actually longer than the inlet one because that's got the pickup on it for the position sensor on the end. Okay, right. What we uh, what we can do now is we can remove the lifters, but the lifters need to go back into the locations that they came out of. So I need to uh, be incredibly careful with that. And obviously, we've got the shims here as well, um, which we'll need to go back into. The location from whence they came so what i need to do is organize myself a little bit better before i uh, get to the point where i'm going to remove all the lifters so what i need to do is tidy myself up uh, get all these bits um, sorted out and put away and then uh, we could look at doing that however i'm not going to do that today because what i'm going to do is um made that another episode because all of this needs to come out there's quite a bit and then what we'll do uh, in the next episode as well is we'll probably get to the point where we can actually take the cylinder head off um off the rest of the engine anyway um yeah uh 
we're getting into the nitty gritty of it now guys it's um it's going pretty well i'm quite enjoying it um hopefully you are as well uh, but yeah that uh, that'll all be uh, in the next episode the rest of it so um yeah hopefully you uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and i'll uh, i'll see you all again for the next one take care guys bye bye now